Testing mic, testing mic quality. Testing mic quality, one, two, three. Another one bites the dust, hey! All right, so welcome back to another review. This time, we're gonna be comparing the tried and true Sundaras once again, but this time we're comparing them to the Philips Fidelio X2 HRs. Now, I know this one isn't probably gonna be a particularly popular uh, comparison here, considering they're actually pretty different and at pretty different price points, but for those of you curious, it's out there, and I happen to have these two, so why not? Now this time I'm going to go ahead and do this in a bit of a more impromptu style. A less written, just more on the fly. I haven't done that in a while, so hopefully I don't just go off rambling about how these are the ones or something. Anyways, let's um, jump right in. So, the contents. With the Sundaras you get a short dual 3.5mm rubber cable, 3.5mm to 4th inch adapter, you know the deal. Now with the Fidelios you get a long single ended 3.5mm cable, a 3.5mm to 4th inch adapter, and the cable management clip thing, which I'll be honest with you I haven't, I haven't even used it since I've gotten these, so. But it's there for you if you want to go ahead and use it. Now I can't decide which I like more because I dislike both cables equally, but I'll give points to the Sundaras just because it is a double-sided cable, so so at least it has that going for it. Now with the build quality, I'm gonna give this one to the Fidelios. I mean, if you've held these in person, you'd realize that, okay, fine, these are somewhat plastic, okay, and these are somewhat metallic, right? But the metal on these doesn't feel quite as secure as you would expect a, a headphone that is mostly made of metal to feel like. On the flip side, the Fidelios, I mean, ugh, these things are just a prime example of what quality build feels like. With a few exceptions out there that I've heard from people in the comment section, I mean, these are it. These are legit. These are like top notch. That you can't, you cannot find be better build quality at this price point. Now they both feature that suspension strap mechanism on the headband, but it only shifts on the Fidelio. So if I go ahead and do this, shifts here. This one is completely just static, just there to provide a little bit of suspension. And now as far as these cables are concerned, I think I, I feel like I'd prefer the Sundara's cable for its flexibility and lighter weight. I mean, both of these are Equally mediocre, but the Sundars just have that tiny little extra edge over them as opposed to the uh, the Fidelios. If only it was longer than two inches, that's what she said. Now this isn't exactly an apples to apples comparison. As you can see, the Fidelios is a single 3.5 and uh, the Sundars cable is actually more of a dual 3.5. So no wonder I'm partial towards the Sundars cable. By the way, I did forget to mention, I've been using my Audio-Technica mic for a while now, as opposed to resorting to my phone's mic. Let me know in the comment section if you do prefer the Audio-Technica mic as a mono, or if you prefer to, for me to just go back to my phone's mic, which I'm perfectly fine with. I mean, that's slightly less editing for me, but I figured that the, uh, the Audio-Technica might provide a slightly better audio quality. So just feel free to let me know down below. Now, as far as comfort is concerned here, uh, the Sundaras take the cake, hands down. They use the same type of headband mechanism, like I said before. The Fidelios have a slightly tighter clamp force so that they can compensate for the for the slightly heavier weight on them, and it's fine, it's not the end of the world. It's a pretty acceptable clamp force, and I do prefer this as opposed to using less, uh, because there are plenty of heavier headphones that I've seen out there, like the Focal LX and the uh, some of the ZMFs out there that are on the heavier side of things and they go, oh, light clamp force because it's more comfortable that way. But in reality, they just feel like they're sliding off of your head. So you can't, you can't enjoy them. So I do appreciate the Fidelio's tighter clamp force, though it is not the most comfortable out there. On the flip side, the Sundaras feature a somewhat tight clamp force as well, but the pads, the pads end up caving in quite a bit, which is a good thing because net ends up being that you get a very aggressive but very safe feeling on your head and you don't you never feel like these headphones are going to start um you never really feel like these headphones are going to slide off of your head yet they never feel like they're just 
you know, aggressively pushing in, you know, squeezing your head off. The ratio of security to comfort is actually pretty good here. I actually really, really appreciate that. Also, another thing to point out here, the Sundars have a more flush profile. So when they sit on your head, it, they don't stick out very much. So you can easily like sit down on a chair with neck support and turn your head back and forth like that because the Sundaras provide that, you know, little extra bit of uh, mobility to your head, whereas these end up sticking out quite a bit, and even though it's not the end of the world, you, these bump into the chair more often, so you do have to keep that in mind. Also, as I mentioned before, points to the Sundaras, double-sided, absolutely amazing. I hate single-sided headphones, but I use them anyway because they are good headphones, but We'll get to that later. Now with amplification, on the THX AAA 789, I run the Sundars at around 12 p.m. on gain 2 and 10.30 a.m. on gain 3. On the flip side, I run the Fidelios at 10.30 a.m. on gain 2 and 9 a.m. on gain 3. So planars are a bit trickier to drive, so I'd recommend an amp for these uh, way more than for the Fidelios. I mean, both benefit off of using an amp, right? But the Sundaras... Just please do yourself a favor, get yourself an amp if you're getting planars. And now we approach the sound portion of this review. Finally, the portion you're all waiting for. So as usual, the following impressions were taken at stock frequencies. No EQ was applied for this portion of this review. Now, let's begin. So let's start off with the bass here. Bass guitars on the Fidelios are more forward and have a thicker sound to them. The Sundaras do have a bit more clarity here though. The rumble of the bass guitar is more textured here, while it was more in your face with the Fidelios. So an example, electronic bass notes at Zealots of Stockholm by Childish Gambino. At the minute 34 mark, the Sundaras have good girth and good rumble. Very, very nice and present. Now the Fidelios then grab that quality and then crank the volume up to 11. Like it's, it's intense, really. However, there is a little less sub-bass than on the Sundaras. The Fidelios are more about the uh, sub to mid-bass presence and impact. It's, it's good, but you know, know what you're getting yourself into. Now at 305, at that valley, the Sundaras pull it off with a little bit of a hump as it reaches the lowest portion of the sub-bass. The Fidelios are more present at every other part, except that lowest portion. I feel the Fidelios have a little more of a linear decay, as opposed to the Sundaras that have a slightly more aggressive roll-off, but with a very deep extension. Now, drums on the Sundaras are very clean and quick, with a good amount of body and spread into the distance. There's nothing to complain about, really only pros, no cons. But, but, then you get to the Fidelios, and you experience the big show. It's it's like the drums on the Fidelio sound very full, massive, and have a lot of reverb going on. So now as we approach the mids, on the Sundara, female vocals are more in line with the rest of the instruments. There's plenty of detail and presence to them, but they don't stand out like they're the star of the show. Now the Fidelios on the flip side actually provide a more hyped sound to them altogether right across the spectrum, but Pertaining to mids, it brings them forwards and makes them sound a tad more pronounced. Now, this does introduce a little bit of stridence, though not too much, thankfully. I think the Sundara's timbre sounds a little more correct and comfortable in this regard. So, the overall timbre of instruments with both headphones can be considered to be thin and snappy, though the Fidelios do reproduce them in a slightly more aggressive manner. Now, as we approach the treble here, Higher brass instruments like trumpets have more energy and aggression on the Fidelios than on the Sundaras. So, depending on the mood or genre of the music you're listening to, this can be a good thing. Now, both of these headphones have a more energetic treble response, be aware. Though the Fidelios are more aggressive than the Sundaras are, except in one particular region. A very, very special region. I'm bringing back this example here, Thunder Horse by Death Clock. There's a particular instrument in this track that sounds like two coins rubbing up against each other right at the back of your throat. Like you can really, you can really feel it back there. At this particular point in the frequency, which affects certain upper percussive instruments as well, both of these headphones bring it forward and in your face, really in your face. However, the Sundara's more metallic timbre really lifts the veil here and lets you feel that whether you like it or not. You can also hear this in uh, Square Hammer by Ghost. Go, you know, 
Listen to the tambourines in that track, and you'll see what I mean. Now, another example right off the top of my head, uh, Bangarang by Skrillex. Here's a good example where you can hear the aggression on the Fidelios becoming a really bad thing. Look, both headphones are forward here, right? Though the way the Sundars do it is they have a more neutral response, and then they bring it forward with the metallic timbre of the planar driver. This, in my opinion, gives it a bit of an edge, which is the kind of thing you look for in like a treble forward headphone, but does not make it uncomfortable to listen to. The Fidelios, on the other hand, I mean, they just start out forward. They're, they're forward, it makes listening to the track unenjoyable for me. It's at the point where I'd have to either introduce some EQ to tame the highs, lower the volume, or simply just skip the track altogether. Seriously, the overall timbre just, it just gets a little whack for me here. It's mostly on electronic tracks though, and only some of those tracks. If you're listening to something like uh, jazz, maybe certain rock tracks as well, like you can hear the slight bit of aggression, but it's more like detail brought forward as opposed to aggression made uncomfortable to listen to. Now with the soundstage and imaging here, soundstage is definitely wider, on the Fidelios than on the Sundaras. The Sundaras have a medium soundstage, yeah, somewhat medium soundstage that allows for all instruments to breathe comfortably, but the Fidelios take that a step further and can definitely have more of a wow factor to them because of that. So when listening to the cello portion of Dream On by Postmodern Jukebox, the cello seemed to just like pop out a little more on the Fidelios, like it had more space in which to exist in. It just sounded a little more um, tangible than on the Sundaras. So I'm going to make a really weird analogy here. When are my analogies never weird? But imagine it this way. If the entire track existed on a sphere of sound, let's say the sound is this sphere right here, right? Then the Sundaras positioned the cello in a way where it sounded like an extension of that sphere. Like let's say it's right here on the right side, on the right side of the sphere. There's that sphere right here, right? And then right at the edge of that sphere, sticking out of it like a boil, that's where the cello is. And it's very clearly, you know, you can clearly distinguish it from the rest of the sound, but it's right there. Now the Fidelios position the cello to make it sound more like it's a, like a tiny little moon gravitating right beside a planet, you know, existing entirely separate from the main body, but, but very close to it. Yeah, I told you the analogy was going to be strange, you, you, yet here you are, so. Now, in general, imaging on the Fidelios extend to the sides wider than the Sundara and do an excellent job at doing that. However, the Sundaras take it a step further and extend the imaging to the rear of the sound stage as well. Not that these don't do that, but the Sundaras do it better. On top of that, I heard more detail and clarity just come through. I mean, you know, just some extra little details that I wasn't able to hear on the Fidelio. It was a difference. There, there really was a difference there. Now for the notes and observations portion of this review, compatibility with tube amps does become a bit iffy with the Sundara since they are planar magnetic headphones. You gotta do your research. Does it, you know, is it compatible with this headphone amp? Is it compatible with this one? Yes, because of this. You no, know because of that. And it gets a little tricky there. For example, with the dark voice, just don't. Don't pair it with the dark voice, at least with stock tubes, because it's just not a good pairing. Like, you can listen to it. It's not that it's incompatible, but it's it just it's not that good. It is clearly inferior than listening to it through solid state in that particular instance. Now, the Fidelios are a dynamic driver. These are different. These you can use on a solid state, on a tube amp, on your mom's Galaxy phone. It's gonna work because it's gonna work. Maybe, okay, maybe, maybe the Galaxy phone might not have enough power to drive it to its fullest, but it works. Now, just as a reference, using the Fidelios on the dark voice with stock tubes simply adds a bit of sibilance to the highs, but adds a little bit of extra slam to the drums. So it's your choice if you're into that flavor, but I really don't think these need that extra spice added to them. And now as far as EQ is concerned, I made these modifications to the Sundara simply to bring that bass extension forward and reduce that little bit of aggression in that one particular area of the treble response. Now on the Fidelios, these modifications allow for a slightly more comfortable listen by reducing the treble response in the areas where it is peakiest by just a bit. So to conclude. This is not an apples to orange comparison, so there is no such thing as a clear winner here. I mean, I've kept both of these headphones for my own personal collection, so that right off the bat should tell you that these are both great headphones. But, which of these do I prefer? 
Of course I prefer the Sundaras. I love the Sundaras. These are they're my babies. If you've been a long time follower of the channel, you know that I highly prefer neutral headphones over anything that favors certain areas of the frequency response. The Sundaras are just more of an all-rounder that I can easily utilize without the need of any sort of EQ. Now I can apply the EQ that I mentioned in the notes and observations portion, but I don't have to. I can just pick these up, plug them in, and listen to them this way. These, not so much. And it's mostly due to that aggressive treble. That's, that's the one thing putting it down. But now we must consider the price difference here, because yeah, let's be honest, they're not the same price. These go for anywhere between 120 to 150 brand new on Amazon or some other website. These go pretty much at for 350 on pretty much anywhere you find them. So clearly, it's a considerable difference. Listen, I'd say the Fidelios give you about 80 to 85% of the Sundara's performance. Yeah, they're really an excellent headphone and they're they're highly recommended for a reason. They really are. But there is the fact that these two are tuned differently. If you're not a fan of V-shaped headphones, you may just want to look at the Sennheiser HD 560S instead of the Fidelios, or even pick up the SHP 9500s or 9600s instead. Uh, you can find the links to those reviews in the description down below, by the way. That said, I think the Sundaras are personally a great endgame headphone for the average audiophile that doesn't want to spend thousands of dollars on a single headphone, or an excellent choice to have as an alternative between two or three headphones in one's collection. You know, imagine it. You've got the Sundara, the neutral planar, you've got the HD 600-ish as the neutral dynamic headphone, and then you've got that third one, that wacky wild card, like um, the HD 800S because of that crazy sound stage or, and imaging, or those close back Fostex headphones because mmm, that bass or something like that. And you just shift back and forth between them. And I think that's um, it's a very good thing to have. Remember, variety is the spice of life. Don't throw all your eggs in one basket, okay? But anyway, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, thank you very much for watching this comparison. You know what to do down below, like, comment, subscribe, yada, yada, yada. And uh, thank you very much for watching this review. I really hope this helps your purchasing decision. And uh, see you in the next one.